Okay, as we all know, square root of 0 is equal to 0, and the limit as x approaching 0 plus of square root of x, that's also equal to 0. In fact, this shows square root of x is continuous when x is equal to 0. But now, have you ever thought about what if we have square root of 0 plus square root of 0 plus square root of 0 plus dot dot dot, and the limit as x approaching 0 plus of square root of x plus square root of x, and so on, so on, so on. What do you think what the answers are? Well, yes, as always, please pause the video and try them first. You did it? Good. Now, the moment of truth. The answer for the first one is 0. And the answer for the second one is 1. No kidding, okay? Why is that the case, though? Well, let me explain. First off, the biggest difference between number 1 and number 2 is that when we have all these zeros right here, they are exactly equal to 0. Right? They are exact zeros. So if you just do it, let's say this right here, up to just three of them, this is going to give you zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Do the square root, still zero. Plus zero is still zero, and then do the square root, zero. So you will just get zero right here, right? However, when we have the limit as x approaching zero plus, x is not exactly equal to zero anymore. That's why you may see these kind of things happen. And the truth is, the limit of a sequence of continuous functions might not be continuous. That's exactly what you see right here. The truth is, this function, square root of x plus square root of x plus da da da, that's actually not continuous when x is equal to 0. So, I would like to show you how did we get the 1 right here. Why not 1 half? Why not 5, right? I don't know, but here we go. In order for us to make sense of this, we will have to define a sequence of functions. So, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say, well, let y1 be the first function, right? Just square root of x. And then y2 will be square root of x plus square root of x. And you see, we can actually define this recursive d. And we can do that by saying yn is just equal to square root of x plus its previous term, right? Which is just going to be denoted by yn minus 1. And this is going to be good when n is greater than equal to 2. And that's our definition. And the deal is that this right here is precisely the limit as n goes to infinity of yn. Because we want to have infinitely many nested square roots like this, right? So now that the strategy is that if we can find an expression for this right here in terms of x, and then we can just do the usual limit, then that would be great. And here's the deal though. Yes, you see that this is the limit of a limit question. So you have to do this carefully. And let's just come back here. All right? How can we find the limit for yn? This is the usual way to do it. We can first say, let the limit as n goes to infinity of yn to be something that say l. Right? So this right here, assume it's going to L. If so, in that case, we know yn minus 1 will also go to L. So I'll just put down, so the limit as n goes to infinity of yn minus 1. This right here is actually going to L as well. And now you might be wondering, does this process really converge? You can do a few things to check. You can check that if this is bounded and bounded above and also monotonic, increasing or decreasing, things like that. Or you can also do the fixed point criteria test, which actually have a similar video. Uh, you guys can go ahead and check that out. But in this video, just trust me that this right here actually works, right? So this is nice because now we know this is going to L and this is also going to L as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, right? As n goes to infinity, then we must have L is equal to square root of x plus this L right here. And now we have an equation to work with. And uh, we can, of course, just square both sides and then rewrite, right? So we have L squared. Put these two things to the other side. So we have minus L minus X, and that's going to be equal to zero. Good. Really good. Because this is a quadratic equation in terms of L. So that means we can use the quadratic formula. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put it down right here. L is going to be negative b, which is going to be negative 1 right here, and then plus or minus, open the square root. Well, negative b squared, I mean negative 1 squared, which is b squared, 
and then minus 4ac is 1 c is technically negative x so 1 and also negative x good and o divided by 2 times f which is 1 yeah and just work this out you'll see that l is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 1 plus 4x and o divided by 2 like so now check this out though do we have both plus or minus or maybe we have to get rid of the negative we have to get rid of the negative because as you can see y1 is square root of x and you can see that here l is equal to square root of that the output of square root is always positive and because this thing is bigger than one we cannot have the minus here so we have to get rid of that l is equal to what l is equal to this expression so i'll just write that down for you guys hmm why don't i want to write this down now well be really careful first off domain issue if you look at this square root part we have one plus four x right this means x can actually be greater than or equal to negative 1 over 4 if you just look at this part. But you cannot do that because you have to know where L is from. L is the limit of square root of x plus square root of x, right? And so on. You have to go back to the original. You see that here we have square root of x and the domain for this right here. So let me just write this down real quick. The domain for this guy is what? Yes, x is greater than or equal to 0. I will do it, write this down for you guys. Ready? In fact, this right here is equal to just this, which is 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4x over 2. This is only good when x is greater than 0. Why? Because the moment that we have exact 0 for x, you actually get 0. So ladies and gentlemen, in order for us to do the limit as x approaching 0 plus of this thing, all we have to do is just do that thing like so. And to do this limit, it's just you can plug in 0, minus in, 0 plus in here and can work that out. In fact, you just get 1 plus square root of 1 over 2 worked out, you get, yes, 1 like that. And as always, that's it.